Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I get a lot of requests from you from all different kinds of flowers and one that I, I painted many years ago, I paint them in all different kinds of ways. You see me paint them in more realistic ways. You see me use the Dutch uh, masters from the 17th century, their particular techniques and styles. Matter of fact, I painted a double hollyhocks many years ago using Wilhelm van Oost's uh, technique and that was a lot of fun. It takes a lot of time. It took me 28 hours to do the painting. But it, uh, uh, it, it is very, uh, let me see, it's fulfilling to, fill, uh, to, to build a beautiful painting like that. Uh, today I'm going to show you uh, more of the Ala Prima. We're going to concentrate on our Ala Prima studies again. And we're going to do the double hollyhock. Now, you know, this is your normal, regular, I mean, just not regular, but, you know, beautiful hollyhock here. And uh, they come in all different kinds of varieties. This is the double hollyhock. This is the iris double hollyhock. Uh, it's beautiful, you see, but it looks almost like a peony. And it gets these smaller center petals in there, though, than, than what a peony has. It has the outer petals and then this um, center. And uh, these are double hollyhocks as well. So what I want to do is uh, show you something. Since we did a peony and stuff earlier, some of the... the the same kind of techniques, but a little bit different. We'll do a different design, a stock design, since the hollyhocks go in a large a stock like this. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So let's let's get going into it, okay? I'm going to be using my standard palette, except for I've replaced the thalo blue that you see me use so many times. Since I'm not going to have too much blue in it, and the blue is, um, I want to be able to control it a lot, I go to the pre-mixed color sapphire blue. Uh, so my normal palette out here, my Hansa yellow, Daryolite yellow, yellow oxide, naphthol red light. This is my burnt sienna. Pine green, my sapphire, red violet, cornacridone violet, white. I've put out some of the um, Dervan uh, open medium that we've been using in the Alaprema series to keep the acrylics wet for such a long time. I also have out a cap here that I'll be using first to start out with of the Heritage uh, Extender Medium, which is thinner. So the difference between that, and I showed you in other videos, the difference between these uh, two mediums here. This one I use whenever I want something to go on thin. This one is thicker, stickier. Um, they both have about the same drying time on them and stuff, but they different consistencies and they give a different feel to the brush. And as an artist, you kind of use, you can mix both mediums, but you kind of use it in the way that you want. And I'm, through this series of all the prime, I'm trying to show you some great ways to do it. So first, let's, uh, this is a, a regular MDF board. Okay, this is a 14 by 18. I'll be painting mostly vertical here. And I just base coated it with black and white with a little bit of yellow, making myself a nice um, lighter value gray here, about a value 7. Okay, so let's get into this. So I'm going to start using my Fusion brush. This is my Fusion 3 quarters here. And uh, I'm going to just start manipulating myself a nice background here. I want kind of some, some softer greens, some yellow greens here. And I'll pick up some whites. I'm going to be giving myself something to, uh, to paint into here, basically. And so I'll start it out here kind of bright. And I'll work colors into it here first. And when you're doing a background like this, you just don't want to do big strokes like this. Not yet. You may towards the end of the painting, but you want to be able to manipulate that background. And, um, uh, you know, you want to be able to uh, add things into it. And big, long strokes, if you take big, long strokes, that kind of distracts sometimes in the final results of your painting. So I add a little bit of sapphire blue. And see, as I, as I add this, especially that sapphire to these colors and stuff, they will start to really gray down the whites. They'll start to gray down, tone down. And so you use those, you know, multiple color combinations here to get some beautiful results that you might want to have. Adding the white, and this is what also tells you, white is a toner. You know, we know from our color theory studies that white is all colors together. And uh, white is actually a toner. Let's go a little bit more green. Let's go a bit of burnt sienna and our yellows as we get down here. So we'll give a nice uh, light area. And um, up here at the top where light might be coming through. You know me, I like to, when I'm doing compositions, I like to uh, streak a little bit of the blues and stuff through. 
But uh, see, the extender keeps this nice and wet. It's also on here a little thinner, like I've explained to you. We did that other uh, peonies and that other rose, beginning rose, with the, uh, uh, the, the thin and thickness of the paint, where we studied the thin and thickness of the paint. Why I choose extender over the, uh, the open medium here, which is, uh, you know, which one do you use what and where? And so I did that whole video on that, which is on the channel, which you can look back into and see that. But uh, so I'll get some of this. Now, I also like to use my paper towels and some of this to move some of the, this colors and stuff for, uh, through. I'll take a little extender and some of this color and just to, to lightly go over some of the gray. I want to leave some of that gray just for interest here. But uh, just to manipulate this background a bit more, add a little bit more color interest to it. Leave just a bit of the gray here. And you get a nice, beautiful, kind of like garden background here just by manipulating your colors like this a little bit. Let's go um, a touch darker where we're going to be putting in and maybe some more yellow. I just love the burnt siennas and yellows here it's so warm see it just feels so warm against some of this other and if i add some streaks of blue sky here towards the end that'll just give a nice a nice contrast here so we'll push a little bit of this around sometimes i use my hand i like how the hand blurs it out see how it can blur out that uh you know the the, the mark here now you can use a soft brush you see me use a palette knife before. I like that. I'm going to give a couple of vertical motions here because the hollyhocks grow on long vertical stems. So I want to get some nice, strong vertical motion to this as well. But before you touch, you know, make sure your acrylics or, your, or if you're using oils that they're non-toxic. You know, I mean, I make sure of all my products that I use are completely non-toxic so you don't have any kind of worries with them whatsoever and uh, if you are you just be very careful you know be very careful it's best not to touch anything and just use your brushes and stuff and you see a lot of people you know i used to be an oil painter uh, many many years ago and there's a lot of people that wear gloves and stuff like that today because of some of the solvents that are in there so you be careful you're you know everyone makes their own decisions okay so I have some of that. I'm going to put a little bit of that lighter blue. And this is one reason why I like the sapphire. You know, you, you saw me use it in the landscape right away. Into the, It just makes a beautiful kind of like sky color right away in here. And uh, so I use some of that. I'll add a bit of extender into this. And I'm just going to streak a little bit of this color through like this. And whenever I streak the sky, that's where I do like to do a, a few longer poles of it like that. Because it gives a power, a motion to it. And if I go, and you know, speaking of design, and some of you want to do some more with design and stuff. And you know, when you're designing, when I'm designing, of course, the Dutch design on St. Andrew's Cross. And there's some that draw, you know, design on thrust lines and stuff. And I really like the vertical and the horizontal thrust lines. And if I if I have here, I'm going to have a very strong vertical, which is the stem of the hollyhocks. I will cross it sometimes like this. Well, many times I do just to put in that motion that's going to cross right into here. And so if I leave a brush mark or so here and a stalk coming up through here, it's like almost like putting almost a St. Andrew's cross in again and saying, you know, uh, here, here's my center of interest. Look right here. Okay. And uh, it's just a really a great way to do that. And you do that with your backgrounds and with your elements and stuff, okay? So this is one of my favorites. <laughs> you can see I use it a lot. It's got paint all over it uh, here. Um, number 10, Fusion Filbert. And um, then this is my number 8, just in case. And I got myself out also a, a number 4 for doing some of the smaller hollyhock centers that I might want to have. And let's get into this, okay? So... Now, so I did all that with the extender. I'm going to switch over now and start painting with the open medium, mixing that into all my colors. It's thicker. It's, it uh, slows down the drying time, but it also makes the paint a little sticky. It gives it a, a great feeling. Let's take some of the sapphire and the greens, the burnt siennas here, and we'll kind of put them all together to make ourselves some beautiful grays here that we can uh, start out our flowers with. 
a nice gray. And I'm going to take it. So if my background here is a 7, I'm going to go up in value here um, to about an 8 or so here, just a little bit lighter. And uh, we'll come in and we'll start to pick. Let's just, I don't like to put it like right into the center, but uh, the double hollyhock is almost a roundish kind of flower. And you can see I'm doing it very soft because I'm going to sneak up. I call it sneaking up onto the shapes of these hollyhocks here. So I'm gonna, just going to start out very soft. And uh, let's maybe put another one smaller, different, I, I, you know, maybe turned right down here. Uh, let's put one. Yeah, we'll go down low. We're going to build these up in stocks, you know, growing here in stocks. So we'll push some of that that color there. Maybe another one that comes up here behind it. We can even, uh, you know, take some softer ones like, you know, they're sitting back behind here in other stocks. You can even pull over to the side like like uh, a lot of compositional artists will do. Rather than leaving like this, you'll put like the idea of another stalk of a flower or something back here. Maybe even a different color of a hollyhock here. And uh, so you can, we can look at some of these other colors. You know, there's all kinds of colors. For, so for example, like here on, on this, you know, you have this other kind of red violet color here, but look at these beautiful colors. And so these would be beautiful together in, comp in, in a composition. And so you start pulling all of these together as to what, you know, you might do and everything and uh, give yourself some ideas, pull some colors together, put some of them together. I just, I sometimes I just like to move the color. If I'm not real sure about exactly what I'm going to paint, I just like to move that color and get that going back in there. That's always a, a good thing. Let's, um, now, we'll, we'll go paint that iris hollyhock here that has that pinky center. So I'll take some of my naphtha red light, some of my quinacridone here first. We'll add some medium to uh, this. And let's just drop this right into this wet. Just kind of move your brush around because we paint for movement. I don't want to go too many strokes, 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 strokes. That'll stiffen it up. So what I want to do is just use different corners of my brush and just kind of tap it around a bit here first and start to create the movement uh, for the, these colors. Now, let's uh, push some of that movement right in here into the shadow here. Make sure you add your medium in here. Boom, boom, boom. Just quick, and I, you know, I have to do it really fast because, uh, you know, I did so many years of stroke work and my habit will be to make them all the same if I don't. And all we're painting for right now, guys, is just movement, okay? Just color movement into the painting here. Let's put some down in here, down into this one. Push that around a bit. You get that nice mottled color going around. That's what I'm looking for, some of that modeling of the color. This one will be a smaller one, so we'll do just a little bit into it here. Maybe just a touch of the pinks into one back there. Touch into this one back here. So it keeps it kind of pretty there. Um, let's put in some, before we go paint the lighter petals, Let's take some burnt sienna and green, pine green, a little bit of our open medium. You know I like these uh, deeper, richer colors in here like this as well. And a little bit of that red coming out of my brush is kind of pretty. And I'm just going to push and move that around. This is the impressionism that I I really like to to paint into, uh, into paintings is get these colors just kind of moving around like that. And... Uh, I really like them. Let's just pull this down through here. We'll give the idea of the stalks and stuff coming up here that the hollyhocks all grow on. So we'll give an idea of a couple of them there. Maybe uh, even with a different green right over here, slightly different, different feeling there. That. And, I, you know, the stalks, I don't, you, you know, even though it's going to be a nice, strong vertical here into the painting, I want to understate it quite a bit. And by the time I get these hollyhocks in there, they will be understated here. Let's take some more of that green and burnt sienna, a little bit of the red violet here. Add your medium. So I get that nice, deep, 
super dark cool color here let's add some of that now one of the reasons why i put this on now this is gonna because of you know and i've showed you in the other videos because of simultaneous contrast the darks will make the lights look lighter so i'll add some of that right now and uh, let's just take some of this and add this around even into some of these back hollyhocks it's a tone and you want to you know we're artists so you know we carry tone so i'll carry this into this hollyhock here a bit as well here and if you notice i move really fast and i know i'm moving really fast for you guys but all of this covers up and this is just your bottom un you know the movement underneath the hollyhock that's all it is and so we just want to get some of these colors, these tones, carry them around a bit, you know, move them around. Um, you know, we don't want to spend a tremendous amount of time on them. Just move those around. We can create some smaller, you know, littler ones right up here. Like these will be other little hollyhocks there. Not opened up, little buds and stuff here. Not opened up. That'll be kind of nice here, like that. So it makes a so you got three main stalks coming up here. And then we'll paint some other you know nice flowers going in and out. Now, all these grays, all these colors down here. And if this gets too sticky for you, you can always loosen it up with some extender medium. You know, if you're not some of you that are acrylic artists, maybe your acrylics are really thin and you're used to painting with them really thin. I like to keep it kind of stiff. But many of my students that are just pure acrylic, they, they, uh, it's hard for them to paint. It's hard for you to paint with the stiff colors. So loosen it up with a little bit of extender. But what I'd like you to do slowly is work on getting and painting with your colors stiffer and stiffer because that just, it, they do so much. Now, what I'm going to do is take a bit of this light and I'm going to pull in. I'm going to bring my light source in from the top up here. So I'm going to start pulling some of these petals in here towards the center. And I'm going to push in and out to incorporate that, just like we do with roses and everything else. We'll push in and out here to incorporate these petals here. Boom, like this. In and out of that. And, you know, many times it starts when you start using the whites and stuff. You might cover up some of the stuff that you've done. And you just do it again. That's all. You know, there's many times I paint back and forth, back and forth, and I'll end up covering something up. But I'll I'll just do it again. That's called art. <laughs> you know, we just do it that way. It's kind of, and I've learned this over time that if if you avoid it, you know, if you go around to paint something and you avoid it, it's going to look in the end product like you avoided it. So just don't. Just paint over it and just say, well, I'm going to do that again. And it gives you the opportunity to try it again. So I don't worry about it. Now, I'll do so, a little bit more. I'm going to take my brush here, pinch wipe off with some of that extra color. Take a little light like we've done before with that petal edging kind of technique. And you can use that onto the edge of petals if you want to give a bit more. See, I use that petal edging technique to shape some things and to give uh, transparent, you know, kind of feelings to a petal. So if I, if I push some light color around like this, it's going to lighten up the tips of these uh, petals and it's going to make them feel some of these other ones here, like I can push right out there like that and give the impression of a translucent or transparent pe petal there, see? So I use just the edge of the brush here and push that around. Just like that, just push it around, kind of draw a little bit here, and you know if I if later on if I change my mind I'll go paint them out and try something else, but I can push up and down and push those colors around, and uh, I might put just a touch of a pink or a light pink here to push into some of the petals and build. So on my light source side up here. I'll build a little bit more in here, push in and out of that center, get that movement in there. That's what we want to preserve, some of that movement as we build this little flower. And you've got to remember, these acrylics will dry about a value or so darker. 
So you're going to build this a couple times. You've got to be careful with white as you get up to the whites because the whites are very opaque here. And I'm going to paint this and then I'm going to you know, go paint some other flowers and come back and revisit it. But you got to remember that, you know, the whites are going to dry down. And so if you don't have enough in there, it is going to, uh, the white's going to disappear. If you have too much, it's going to be too opaque. So it's a learning process, guys. It's a learning process of you and your paint and your brush to, to how much, you know, color you put on to affect a change or to affect something. And it's a learning process. That's all it is. Okay. Now, let's put on, just like we do with a rose, let's go in here and let's take some dark. We'll add a bit of our medium into this. And let's go in and push around some contrast cool color that is our shadow side of our double hollyhock here. Okay, we'll push that in. Sometimes I'll take just even more pure red so you have different, you know, this is what makes them pretty. So you'll have the different colors of them here coming out. Use the corner of your brush and tap that around, okay? So you have some different colors. Now, let's take a lighter. Maybe uh, use this, maybe a bit of uh, towards an orange a bit and push a little warmer color. So we'll have a cool side and we'll have the lighter, warmer side of this hollyhock here into the center. And we'll push around. Sometimes I'll just pinch wipe my brush, maybe take a little bit of our whites and some of these colors that are soft and just kind of tap around the edges here to leave some movement, but it's all very soft color, see? And I'm going to come back and work that some more. You know, I'll come back and work it quite a bit more. I'm going to put a bit more, and I like to leave, especially in the center of interest one, just small strokes. I don't like it to be blended out too much. I like some of this movement here, and uh, so yeah, it just uh, and I have here you see me using my left hand. I and I had a, a question on one of the comments on one of the videos that they saw me painting with my left hand. I paint with both hands back and forth. The majority of the time I use my right, but sometimes you'll see me use my left a lot, and I'm not. I was never really ambidextrous. I taught myself to do that. And I do that because my right has, if I feel that my flower is a little, or whatever I'm painting, the snow on a mountain or something like that is a little bit too stiff, I go use my opposite hand that's not as easy, but it has a different kind of movement than this one does. So if I feel that I'm getting a little bit uh, too much too similar, I use my other hand and it gives you a different look. And uh, it, you know, it does a nice job. So, and because I, I don't, I have preset motions in here because I practiced for years pulling strokes and and everything. And um, this 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 works so much better with my other hand sometimes. Let's um go here with some um, a back one. We kind of wanted to make a back one right here. Maybe it's going to turn sideways here. So we'll push in and out. Let's take a bit more light. Now I'm going to let this tack up a bit. Okay, it's really wet. It's got a lot of paint on it. It's really wet. So I'm going to give it a few minutes here to start to tack up and settle in together. And I'll go work on some of these other flowers here, setting them in to while that, that uh, sets in. Let's make a light pink. So add medium. Oh, don't forget to feed your medium. We don't want the white, the light any lighter than our, our whites or anything over here. And that might be a little too warm, so we'll add a little bit of our cooler quinacridone to that. That's a bit better. Let's just model this through here. Push the colors in into the background there. We want these to be kind of lost, so we're going to lose those colors right in there. And... Uh, We'll push a bit of this. We'll let this one go pinks right into some of those reds and stuff. Push a bit of pinks into that. Bit of pink movement. Bit of the pink movement there. Okay. And when you're painting a group like this, you only have to paint a few of them really nice. And then the others, you just kind of... Um, you know, just kind of give the idea or the impression, and that's really what makes them look nice. You know, only a few of them have to be nice, or have to be perfect or 
the rest of them can just be movements of color and uh, the viewer will see that. I'll pull that down just a bit. The viewer will see them as a nice hollyhock here. Let's put in a little petal out this way. Push that in and out there. Since it's going to be turned, let's give just a bit of that bowl down here. Pushing up and down like that. They're really kind of, and you can shape them and turn them. You know, the thing is, you just go look up, you know, just go get a bunch of photos of double hollyhocks and put a few of them all around you and you'll see some really, really pretty one, pretty ones. But I'm painting these a heck of a lot faster than I did on that Dutch one. We'll push up that just a bit. So remember when I said before about the pears and everything on the, those lessons. You can use your brush here too, flat, and do the push-pull like I showed you before on those, do the push-pull. But if I want to, you know, if I'm putting on a color here, and this is very important, guys, okay? If I'm putting on a color, if I want the light to come down, I pull this way. If I want the shadow to go up, I pull this way. So in, if I'm not sure, first of all, I'll run it right by where the two join together. And then if I want shadow up, I pull up like that. If I want light down, I pull down, and it pulls a light stroke down. Do you see that? And so, you know, keep that kind of in mind, you know, where I'm always, it's not that I just move it back and forth with my finger. I'm determining when I move that, uh, you know, do I want to see light or do I want to see shadow? Let's put a little bit of softer color. So I added a little bit of the gray here, right out here, and give it like a little back there. Maybe just a touch or two of some light idea of color here that the hollyhock would have there into the light. We're going to paint these very impressionistic, nowhere near like I did on that Dutch one and stuff. So we're going to stay a little bit more impressionistic today. So I just want to paint more than anything else movement here. So that's kind of a nice one there. And uh, we'll come put a little bit more of an edge, maybe this one right up in front of that. One, and see, I'll let some of that dirty brush come out. Pick up some paint here. Push that around. Let's put in a nice petal here, like this is a nice little reaching one here. Push in and out. Push that into the bowl. Maybe a bit of that nice pink there into, like the bowl, but uh, here. And, uh, but maybe these are nice covering petals up here in the front, the outside petals. So we'll just pull a little bit of light. Sometimes if I feel like I'm too stiff, I'll pull across and then pull it in and out just a bit. And that will change the whole feel of the, of the painting. Now you can come back with that little petal edging technique and put on a little bit more of an edge or, you know, a little bit more color movement so you get a different feel for it there. Let's put just a bit of the pinks back here. And I'm not going to do too much. I'm just going to let your eye say, hey, there's another flower or something back there. We're not done there yet. We'll come back and revisit it. But let's take a little light pink here and uh, pull some movement here onto these guys. A little bit of pinks, some other stuff. But I, you know what really makes these pretty, especially if you're going into the reds, some of these nice deep reds in here. And let those just kind of work together like that. Just just kind of push them around. Use that corner, the edge of the brush. Paint movement. Don't paint petals. Paint movement. Get this nice movement going on in there. That pretty movement. Then you can come back in and tap some other little light colors. Use the corner of your brush and stuff and tap some other little light It'll give the impressions of some of these petals. We can go more to a lighter pink kind of idea for some of the reaching little petals there. Push it around a little bit. Push the color around there. Okay, so you get some different ideas. We can put a, a little more of our red violets and red quinacridones colors, a little deeper color tone in there. I like to see, and it's just it's just this good movement. We can pull some uh, we can pull some beautiful leaf colors and stuff like that in there as well. But see, I'll strike 
that way and then use the corner of my brush taking it out like this so you know and the hardest thing is to stop yourself from painting one way you know so don't paint just one way paint multiple ways here as you start to put some of this movement in and as you'll see I'll go through several times and get some of this movement now I also do this sometimes with the smaller brush and you saw me like um, in the last video I posted the daisies the daisies uh, that I painted they I used the brush and there was and that comes from a technique again I was reading you know many years ago I was reading about John Singer Sargent who I really really I mean those of you that study with me you know I talk about John Singer Sargent all the time and John Singer Sargent really loosened me up as an artist and um, the uh, uh, the John Singer Sargent in one of his his uh, ten principles of, of basically all of Prima was he says use your brush like a pencil and so I started out by taking my brush down really small it kind of violated one of his other principles but and I started sketching around a lot and that really uh, started to add a lot of movement to my paintings and it helped a lot so you'll see me in that one use my brush like a pencil and kind of sketch the pet petals in and that really does work as well different looks and we're all different I'm going to build up a little more light right here so I'm even going to set it down a little bit more here a little harsher and we'll set that down here I'll probably put another bit or uh, even more pure white here and do like a and I'll do this to pull out like a little chiseled edge here maybe a more forward pure white petal and so I'll let this those whites just carry up into there like that so you get some of that that nice interest let's put a lighter so I'm watching my light source bringing my light up I'm watching my light travel through my painting here I'll bring that one up there just a little bit lighter okay let's bring in some lighter here so I'm gonna let that one sit for a minute and I'm just gonna pull some lighter strokes here going almost to pure white right up here into the front of this one and bring it way forward lots of movement this is the forward part tap in and out here like this just get some nice movement in there that's the most forward part sometimes I'll, I'll take these colors and I'll just kind of skip them around the edges see how that gives a nice little light quick edge to the to the the peony here you can push it around which will give you a little bit more translucency to I'm um, not peony I said peony double hollyhock <laughs> okay the double hollyhock um, let's lighten up let's get a bit of those yellow oranges in here okay some of these pretty lights here we'll just move some of this around and I'm just using and I'm kind of enjoying it the, the corners here of this brush and I think it's doing a pretty good job I want to every once in a while though push back through here with some of the shadow now you know when I painted that other one that I showed you into the Dutch you know I did a lot of small brush light and shadow and a lot of work on it uh, this one I'm gonna paint in about one hundredth the amount of time and let what happens happens and you know of course with the impressionist we let the viewers eye kind of judge but I'll push some of this movement down let's push in some of this bit more of this and I, I look for colors color movement in here see and I want it you want it to kind of all round up in through here but you want petals going in all different kinds of directions here sometimes your fingers get so full of color and that's great because it just puts color out here really casual then okay so I want stuff going on all over the place there but you can use let me just show you you can use a smaller brush like this maybe change that tone a bit and start setting in smaller little marks like this which are absolutely you know represent the edges and, and um, you know flat and edges of the petals and stuff and then take some of it out with dark now I like to set in light and then paint out with dark that's how I like to do it so if you wanted to create something like this you might do a little bit of wiggling around and then come back and push the dark in to take it out and and that's because dark takes out the light really easy light doesn't always take out the dark but dark take out takes out the light really easy so that's why I like to do the uh, 
light first and then set the darks in here. And so I'm just going to go, go for some movement here. Okay. Set in some other colors around here. Just set in some of that nice little movement on this other side. I'm going to go more. I like this quinacridone. It's really pretty. I like to keep some of that quinacridone in there. Just, you know, like Sergeant said, use your brush like a pencil. Almost, you know, imagine yourself. How would a, when you're using your brush like this, how would a sketch artist sketch in here, you know, to, to get that kind of movement and stuff? And that's what you kind of, you know, start to imagine here. Let's take a bit of that gray and push that in and out there. Here, like that. And I like some of those. And, you know, sometimes you make a bit of a mistake <laughs> and take out too much. And you go back to your friend, the bigger brush here, and we'll, we just add it in again. But maybe a little more mottled color here so it's not quite so. And let's just add in the stroke again. And, and it always it always looks nice. You get a little more color going in there. See, as I get some of that in there, and I'll watch. I'll push some right here. And then I'll just use my finger to push it in and out a couple times. Not too many more than that because they'll blend together too much and make one color. You don't want to make one color. You know, I always tell everyone, think of marble, you know, when you're pushing in something like that. Think of how marble is how colors swirl around and stuff into marble. And that's kind of like what I envision as I'm doing this. And I'll pick up color here. And I, I really do like the casual nature here of the, um, the big brush because I just use different corners, edges. I'm constantly turning it in my hand here. Let's put in a, a little bit more light. Go down here by our grays. Let's build a little bit more light, a little more color out here on our light side and we'll push in and out to those back top petals there. That'll loosen them up a bit. Here. We'll drop this one in there as well, right into that area. See, so you get that nice color movement in and out stuff there that makes a pretty little movement there. And that's what I look for, guys, is that movement. Let's just push that in and out. And sometimes I'll step out like a little farther so that my flower doesn't have exactly the same size. And, and I'm kind of doing something I don't like here as well, is I'm making all these petals almost the same size. So I'm going to start breaking them up just a bit here, size-wise. I'm always saying don't, it's a left brain. I'm a solid left brain painter, which the, those of you that study the right and left side of the brain know that the right side of your brain is your artistic brain and the left side is your logical analytical. And um, I'm a solid, I've been tested several times, I'm a solid left brain. That doesn't mean I can't paint. It just means I have to be careful because I'll line things up and make things even and stuff like that. And I know that about myself, so I know I need to change some things. Just adding some extra color here. See, just right light, and this is where I'll lift up a bit. And I don't want this to blend or anything too much. But I want to give a, and maybe a, a bit more of the red coming in here. Tapping that out and around. And see, it's the movement. Your eye will see petals where it wants to or where it it you know, we'll visually see little petals and stuff like that if I just get some nice variety of little movement in here. And I started out big and now I'm going a little smaller, little touches here. Your eye will turn those into little turning petals and little things going on. That's what'll happen here. And I four, I stop the left side of my brain for making these all perfect little petals. I'm just tapping color around, see? But I'm always kind of pulling into the center just a bit because that's the, the direction of the petals that they go. Let's put a bit more light right up into the front center here. Just kind of turn that around a bit, you know, because it, it'll go around like that. And it makes 
the double hollyhock, which is very, very similar to the peony, you know. So, but we can then, after you put in some of that light, take a bit of that dark, reset out some of that dark, or push through some of the colors there. Give yourself a nice difference here. Don't forget to add your medium. Nice change of colors. Push around a bit. Here, like that. Let's take out just a touch of that light with some of that shadow. And that's kind of pretty in that one there. And I will, um, you know, maybe take a bit more of this gray. Neutralize my that red in my brush with the gray. And then, because I don't like to rinse out the brush. If I'm painting all the Prima, I have my water over there, but I, if you notice, I haven't touched any kind of water. Water is the faster drying stuff, and if you go touch into water, you add a faster drying thing right to your paint, and you could be drying your acrylics a lot faster than what you want. And it's, you did that by adding the faster drying thing, the faster drying medium to it, okay? So I stay out of water, even though I, you know, you maybe want to rinse your brush out, I don't. I I neutralize it. When I was an oil painter, we used to use uh, oils to, uh, I mean, uh, uh, raw sienna to neutralize the oil, the oil color in our brush. It was just a different way. We didn't do, we didn't clean out too much, especially if we were in the more fatter part of the painting, what we call the fat part of the painting. A little different. So anyway, that makes a nice little hollyhock there. That one's kind of pretty. Let's take some of this lighter pink here and we'll just make a few light turns here right on the edges of this one let's put in a, maybe a light little petal right here and that will just give a little more interest right there to this one right there and uh, I like that let's put a little bit more of the darker reds right in there to say boom there's that one that's kind of pretty. Let's uh, push in a bit of that right over here, softer. Then we'll go into the lighter pinks. And boy, that one's really, really cool. So maybe a bit of the warmer naphthol red light here. And push that around. And see, all I'm doing, guys, is don't try to copy what I'm doing. Just rotate your brush and make some different marks. Each time I'm pulling in, kind of like what I do with everything, I imagine where the calyx is, and I tap and roll and push into the calyx. The biggest thing about painting something like this is to stop painting. You know, I mean, it doesn't take that much to say a shape. So, you know, stop painting. Don't do it too much. Here we'll give just the, uh, the idea I'll pick up like that petal edging here, maybe just the idea here of an edge of a petal or something like that. That this little hall. I keep. I think I keep saying peony, don't I? Because <laughs> they do look like peonies. Uh, this hollyhocks. And yeah. So every time I say peony, I want you guys to yell at the video <laughs> and tell me this. Whoops. You know what I mean, okay? That's, I just get lost in my painting here. and So it's not always right there. That's kind of a little pretty one just sitting off there like that, isn't it? it if I want to leave it like that, I should probably, and, and this is just for interest, I should probably build up the front of this one just a bit more to keep that uh, nice, clear, front of it. Does that make sense? See how that, by putting in that nice opaque textured stroke right there, your eye comes right back into here. That's still lovely, but your eye comes right back into here. And that's a, a beautiful thing, and you know, that we talk about in some of the other videos about using texture and stroke. Now, I'll just incorporate this just a little bit here. I want to leave some of that nice brush movement, but I want to incorporate a bit of that. Maybe a nice lighter little pink stroke there. Maybe just a... And so you see, notice here I'm painting out. It gives me a different contrasting stroke as well. So sometimes, like right here, I'll paint in. I'll pull in. That gives me a different look than the pulling out. Do you see that? And 
especially right around your center of interest and stuff I like to do that you know let's just pull in just a bit there let's just model in a little more of that dark right in there okay leave that paint almost said painty again wow that double hollyhock okay good let's leave that one kind of where it is I was testing you on that one <laughs> so let's go down here and maybe just smear on a little color as this one's going back here we'll let that just sit into the back like that smear it around a two-second double hollyhock boom see and see this is a beautiful thing so I just push that around real fast right all I'm doing is when you're doing something like this guys is I'm just pushing some color in and out with my light which simulates the in and out of the light petals and then I turned my brush round a little bit with some of my reds which simulates the rounding kind of color that you see up here I'm not getting any more involved in that and if those movements again I say it's all about movement if that movement is the in and out and the round like this it's going to look like a like a, a double hollyhock it's not going to look like a peony it's going to look like a double hollyhock now I may add a bit more of a dark just a bit here okay or right up here in the front I'll pinch wipe that neutralize that red We'll go over here and pick up more of an edge and I might I might put on just a bit of an edge here and, and that's up to you how much and the more I do the more this hollyhock starts to come forward see so that that's really up to you now I like that light traveling through here I want to see some light traveling down so let's get some of this grade and some of this light right here and uh, let's do a, a, a pretty hollyhock right down here we'll let it start to fade away but we'll start it out really nice move in and out that color we'll let some of this go very transparent I'll add some of these grays as I go back here so it starts to get a little softer back there but uh, maybe a bit more light a bit more color right up here right up towards this front here so that light travels down like that that's what I'm kind of looking for and um, then let's get some of our nice red violet reds quinacridones here model those all together let's push some of that right into the center just tap your brush around maybe pick up some more red red so it's a little different push don't push too much let that just kind of kind of be there push around a bit let's go to a lighter pink onto the outside here like that I'm gonna let the outside here just kinda fade away now to help that fade away I might I'm just gonna push in some extender here put some extender right in here which is thinner and just push in and out a bit like that while this is wet thinning out my paint getting rid of the texture so it, the painting recedes right there see Let's pick up some more thick light color here. We'll drop this into this area and maybe a stroke or two like right in there like that. So maybe a bit of an edge right here. So that comes in right like that. That's kind of pretty different, you know, and maybe and I won't do too much more to this. Maybe a lighter little pink hits right up in through here like that and take out anything with some of your reds the reds are the, some of the most important ones here you know like I say the lights are nice to give that movement now if you got a big area like that you can just come back and just use the corner of your brush and touch a little bit of color in there to give a bit of movement that's all you want to do just give a bit of the movement maybe soften some of that right in there just a bit you know you can use your brush with just the angle edge of the lights here just to kind of say there's the feeling of some of those petals and stuff that's all you need just a corner just tap it around like that but we want to keep most of that right up in there right up in there let's put a 
bigger stroke of some red right in here. Boom. Look at how that really makes that this one hollyhock just come out and come out and just put a little lighter pink right over the edge of that. Maybe a bit more red back and forth, just a touch. There we go. Just like that. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Okay. And so, you know, back out some of these other areas, you know, do you put in like a, like here's some of my grays, pinky grays. You can uh, just kind of whisper some of this color in and out back here just to give impressions that there's other things back there. You know, softer little, uh, you know, hollyhocks back here. Here, we'll push one kind of right in there. We just And again, you know, what I'm thinking when I put this on is in and out movements for the, the reaching petals here, rounding movements for the bowls. So here we'll just put on just some movement here. Push that around just a bit so it gets softer. And we'll just leave something like that. And that just, it just works. Let's go with some, we'll go right down in here so that we can use, I'm going to use some pine green, some yellow, a little Hansa. Some of our pinks go into this so it softens it out. Then we'll lighten this up here. And uh, we'll use some of this light and dark here to, to bring out some of the stems here of these hollyhocks here. And see, I said hollyhocks here. So we'll bring out some of the ideas of the stems here. Nice verticals. Nice strong verticals here. And rather than going too much lighter, I mean, I could put a little bit more of a highlight on there. Um, and this this is stuff that runs to me, so I could put a little bit more of a highlight on there. but. If I want that to come out more without, if I go too much lighter, I'll start to interfere a little bit with my hollyhock. So I'll go with a darker, cooler color next to it, negative paint. Now you see me negative painting some of this stuff all the time. But see how that brings out the stem without, and I can negative paint up right up through there, drop that shape in. It helps bring up the stem right in here and concentrate your eye right up in here without um, distracting or making the, is that stem as light as what you see on the uh, the front, ho the main hollyhock here. So now let's just take a bit of that with some of our greens here. And let's just, you, and sometimes I just love negative painting. I think, you know, that's just, one of the things that just adds a lot to your painting, loosens it up quite a bit. So I'll usually look for an area or two that I can get some of that in there. Let's gray this out, really gray it out here. Push some of that in here. Now you can go make absolutely, you know, beautiful petals or leaves and stuff of this. And I'll probably make a couple of leaves here, but most of it I'm just going to, do impressionistic leaves. I don't want to have too much more stuff going on in this. I'm going to start thinning out. If I'm working out here, I want this to be thinner. I don't want to get that nice thick color that I used everywhere else into my painting here. I want to use it a bit thinner here. Let's take some of this nice thin stuff here and we'll just continue on that feeling of this hollyhocks of the stems here. Come and just continue those feelings a bit here. And uh, push these around, these colors around. Soften them up, softening them by giving a bit of light color. You can see that I can control, I'll control my colors, my greens, my siennas, these are control the color by the light, by white with it. That should, that, you know, controls how much they are going to uh, show up and how much more of a specific or perfect leaf that you might do. Now, I might make a bit more of a yellow green one here, right up in here, which will pull the viewer's eye a little farther forward. Let's just mix this up a bit here. 
And so I'll put on too much, and this is the way I like to do it. I'll put on too much, and then I'll start taking some of it out. And sometimes with light, sometimes with shadow here on the shadow side. So I put on too much, and then I start taking it out a bit. And, you know, just giving the impressions of these nice leaves here, nice leaf colors. Maybe a, a stroke right across through here will give the impression of a nice leaf right there underneath without having to paint too much because I want the viewer's eye to just see the hollyhocks here, the double hollyhocks. And so I'll bring those out here. Let's push a bit of these greenier colors out here. And again, I start to travel color. I start to look and travel color here. And you can, you know, express a little heavier, just some of these nice warmer yellow greens. See how that just adds just an extra little color, an extra little bit. You can do this with the blues as well. It all depends on how much, you know, interest you want. Now, I've got a lot going on in there, and I just hit that, that, uh, edge of that hollyhock which is going to give me the opportunity to go back and correct it but the I can uh, use a little bit of negative painting right there just to pull a little more if and you can see it just pulls a bit more dimension there into the uh, the painting there pulls that petal forward a bit I'll take some extender and get some of that green out of my brush just a bit go back here pick up and you know like I said before if you have that happen this is your opportunity if you want to make that petal look more transparent just by taking this down into the petal a little bit here like this okay and you can start to make that petal look a little bit more transparent I'll put on some light here and push and just push like that and leave that light little edge there and you start to make that petal look like it's transparent see and uh, so you know and that's it's easy to do you can push that green right into there push it right into the background push it right into that part of the hollyhock there take some light come back and just touch the edges of it push that through and you get this nice kind of a translucent green hollyhock and maybe put a little bit of pink up in there and that will and there's just all kinds of ways, and this becomes your signature as the artist, you know. Do you paint trans transparent or translucent? And I'm for a new paper towel. Do you paint the translucent or, you know, petals? Um, you know, maybe I want to have just a bit more light right here, edge, so that that part of this little hollyhock comes forward more right there. Let's put a bit right here so... This part of it is all coming more forward, right up through that, right up through there. I'll hit that light right in there one more time. I like that. Maybe that light pink right up here. Hit that light so that I always kind of, you know, take my my uh, viewers here is looking at it like kind of like a visual journey up through the lights. I like to do that. And there's all kinds of ways. That's the beautiful thing about art. There's all kinds of ways to do it. And uh, I never like to say, and you'll, you, you know, well, let me just say this. When I was a young teacher many years ago, 35 years ago, I used to say, well, this is the correct way to do it. And then as I actually educated myself more, I realized there's thousands of ways to do it. And we don't ever want to say that this is the only way to do it because then that stems creativity. And uh, you shouldn't, shouldn't do that. And because, you know, we want to be, we want everyone to be creative and find their ways. Now, I did something here, perfectly left brain is a, worried about those two colliding, so I'm going to push this one right up on top of that just a bit, a streak or two there. But, um, you know, left brain people will tend to avoid that. I like to do, like I've talked to you before, the formality of the painting and bring some of these together like that. So it gives you kind of an idea here, and you can build up some more color, some more lighter yellow greens here. 
um, build that up just a bit more. How much more you want, that's your call. Do you want to build that leaf up a little bit more perfect here? That's your call. Do you want to you know, build up that? And the hollyhock, the hollyhock leaves are tend to be kind of big and round, and round so. And, uh, well, let's not go that light. Put that little bit of mark there. It's kind of nice. But remember, you can bring those stems out through darks just as equal. So, But a, a little bit of the light. I always like to bring, I always call the leaves, they're bridges. They're bridges to your flowers. And so you, you don't want to get them as light as your flowers, but you can take their values up light, a uh, little bit lighter, you know, so that uh, uh, the color so that your eye travels, can travel through the uh, the leaves as well, but they see the flowers first. Now, I'm just gonna go back and see, with a little light blue, we'll go back into our extender here. And uh, I do like pushing the lights through, just that movement. I love light movement of that blue. and. I like it a lot because it sells really well for me as well. I not only do I like it, but it does sell really well. People like that that little bit of movement that I add here coming back through. And a little pink into that might be nice too. But I'll push in like that. Sometimes you'll see me push in and out and blur those in. Some of you may not like it, some of you like it, but you know, it works it works for me and my and my collectors so we'll just push some of that in and I like those little colors coming in I like the the streaking of it coming through here it just looks nice works that way sometimes I let the that streak go right over the flower and uh, just soften that whole thing out you know it just gets kind of like a nice misty kind of movement through it here, let's put in just a bit more blue so it's not quite as powerful light and just push a little bit of that through here. Just a bit of that. And if you hit anything too much, you just go back and use your, um, use your brush and bring it back. You know, bring back some of your edges or some of your lights and, you know, you can... Take some of that blue, which is really pretty, and you can just touch it a little bit here and there. See that little bit of blue? It's harmony. A little bit of blue here and there. Even over here, maybe go a little darker. But even over in here, a little bit of that blue into those right over there. And it, what it does is it's a unifying thing. It's, it's harmony, what we call harmony. And it's a unifying the background and to the flowers and everything by giving them something in common, which is the blue. So all kinds of uh, ways to do that. Let's put in just a bit more, maybe a bit more of a red right in there. A bit more of that touch. I'm just looking at the, especially, you know, I always tell you, you know, in the rose painting, we always call this the queen, right? And we and always say, come back at the end of the painting, always revisit your queen and stuff. So there you go. That's uh, kind of a nice little uh, little painting there. That Now you can, um, out through here, you might just, you know, finish up by taking a few softer little bits and adding some extra little colors like there's other ones back down out through here or to fill up your painting just a bit you know I say that our little greeny gray here give the impression don't paint anything big just give the impression that there's other things out there and um, you know and, and if I had this up as a bigger painting I might even do more hollyhocks out there but just give the, the impression here there's something out there kind of filling up some of these areas here push that around a bit and you got yourself a, a nice little painting uh, here you know and uh, it's kind of fun let some of these edges just kind of blur together or you can bring this one up just a bit but I like the blurriness of it to the high contrast um, 
of that other one. Now, in looking at this, I just might want to uh, increase that uh, that front one there just a bit. And I'm going to need to get, I painted all my white, so I'm going to get just a bit more white, just a touch more, Dave, here. And maybe take this up just a bit more round here, a little higher, a little rounder. See, so I just don't overmix too much, just so you can just touch some of that light, especially the light right out here, because you're up by your light side, right? And we'll just tap around, maybe get some of that light edging to come out. Here, that's going to be it. I don't think I need any dark in there. Just some nice light to kind of fill that all up there like that. That worked pretty nice. Pretty nice. Little edges. Little edges there. Push in and out of that like that. Okay. So there you have it. And uh, it's kind of fun. Just And stop painting, Dave. It's kind of fun. Uh, you know, to, to do that, you can do it relatively quickly here. <laughs> relatively quick little painting, double hollyhocks. Now, you know, like there's the Dutch technique that I did that is a lot more involved, makes a super realistic um, painting. Uh, and then there's other kind of less casual. This one is very casual. This one is uh, very much all the prima and impressionistic, and I like that. Uh, about it. They look almost like the peonies, which I really do love painting. Um, we'll do some other, these other hollyhocks uh, here, you know, so we'll do some of those in another lesson and stuff like that, guys. So we have a, we have a whole year of this. So I think next week we might head back to uh, another um, uh, landscape, but I have a new uh, bird painting also that I want to do with you in all the prima, wet into wet and get that real painterly look to some of our birds. So I want I want to get one of those done as well. And I also promised some of you, I showed it up onto the community tab, the photo of the uh, Arctic um, wolf here. And um, I'll do a, I'll, it's one of my online classes and we're studying color, color tones, painting whites. Um, so I can't show the whole lesson, but I want to show you guys a little bit of it so that you can see just a, I, it's a totally different way of painting, okay? But uh, thanks for joining me on the channel. And uh, I hope you've hit the subscribe. And I hope you like, you click that like. And if there's something you want to see, hit the comments. Because you've, as you see, as you look through all the videos, I answer all the comments. And uh, I sit down every morning and I read your comments and I answer the comments. So if there's something you want to know, you want to talk to me directly, hit the comments. And I'll be there, okay? Alrighty. I'll see you guys on the next one.